cartoon dictates the way you work. The line has to be in in tune with the with the image. I want it to look scraggly and padded and torn. For more than 40 years, Pat Oliphant was the most widely syndicated political cartoonist in the United States. His satirical barbs appeared in more than 500 newspapers across the country, targeting every White House administration from Richard Nixon to Barack Obama. Pat, for decades, was one of the most important political commentators. Beautiful, artistic drawings and wit and fearlessness and mercilessness. He was able to make the, 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 the powerful, when they were being ridiculous, he was able to make them look ridiculous. And that's Pat's absolute expertise. Being a cartoonist is um, a great privilege, really. I can say things that people want to say. That privilege ended four years ago when failing eyesight forced Pat to finally put down his pen at the age of 80. Over his 60-year career, Pat Oliphant drew thousands of cartoons, along with sketches, paintings and sculptures of his favourite political targets. He's now donated most of it to the University of Virginia, which is also home to the archives of some of the presidents he mocked. <laughs> Pat and his wife Susan have travelled across the country to be guests of honour at a celebration of his life's work. He's the greatest cartoonist in the world. The power of pictures, so much more than just reading history, he brings it alive. Yeah, our dog. She's a great Love dog. Our dog. We love our dog. I think he is terrific. Julia Poe just showed up. Oliphant has been called the most imitated political cartoonist in the United States. That was the use of the Easter Island statue mm -hmm. uh, uh, motif. It so it kind of does evoke sort of that sense of pagans worshiping uh, the idol. Yeah. I didn't know I said all that. I need a drink. New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd worked with Pat early in her career and remains both a friend and a fan. Pat could determine the fate of a politician with a few strokes of his brush. When he covered Jimmy Carter, for instance, when Jimmy Carter was increasingly seen as weak, he just made Jimmy Carter smaller each week in the cartoon, Jimmy Carter would get smaller and smaller and smaller. And he did the same thing with W. When W went into the Iraq War and Pat disapproved of it, he made W smaller, like a little tiny jangly cowboy. Satirist and author PJ O'Rourke believes Pat's work has always been motivated by a keen sense of moral indignation. This guy can draw, you know that? I'll tell you how he did it. Pat has never made a caricature in his life. That is to say, he doesn't exaggerate people's physical features for just for the sake of mockery. It's morally animated. Pat drew Nixon, you saw into Nixon's soul. And it wasn't a pretty sight. He's a one-off. Catholic Church did not address its holy terror of a child abuse scandal until publication of Pat's very deservedly famous 2002 cartoon, Celebration of Spring at St. Pedophilia's um, uh, uh, annual running of the altar boys. Uh. To be doing something so evil and preying on the most vulnerable of children I think is one of the most evil things I've ever seen. So they, more than anyone, deserve Pat's just, righteous wrath. He never doubted that he was being too hard on people because he was only hard on them when they deserved it. Cartooning has come to some people to mean uh, a, a funny, a, the funny papers, you know, but Patrick's work is a serious commentary. Humor is the vehicle, part of the part of the the uh, toolbox of what what we have for uh, cartooning. 
Pat Oliphant may have put down his pen, but his work will remain in the public eye, with a feature documentary and a career retrospective book now in the works. I do not think art like Pat's will pass this way again, because the circus has left town. All we've got left are the clowns, and how do you go about making fun of the clowns? Well, we love your work, and I'm so, so happy that we were able to get your work to the university. Thank you for coming. Oh, I think they've done a magnificent job. Uh, the way they've displayed the, the sculpture mixed in with the cartoon works out very well visually. It gets a bit embarrassing after a while. <laughs> Pat is a giant. You know, you only produce giants in the culture, you know, once in a generation if you're lucky. Perhaps it's his Australian roots, but to those who know him best, Pat Oliphant has always remained unfazed by all the flattery and attention. My dad has never liked the limelight. A moment like this for him, I think, is a moment of deep gratification um, and also a little uncomfortable. He's a rather quiet man. He doesn't say a whole lot. I, I think now, do you know, he listens. He listens and he looks and he doesn't talk a lot. I'm a listener, yeah. And that's how I learn things. A lot of people don't do that. What do you think your legacy will be? Just that he was a good cartoonist. I hope, I hope that lasts. <laughs>